Well, a while back, you mentioned Wikipedia. Yes, I did. Uh, interesting you should do that. Now, excuse my French, but I really do wonder what the fuck they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, Zach, if you would show my screen, uh, it was brought to our attention on Twitter this week uh, that that Brett, your Wikipedia page uh, now reads the end of the first short paragraph. Weinstein and his wife, Heather Hine, have spread misinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic on numerous occasions. And if you go to the link there to mine, it says the same thing. Uh, and if you go to the <clears throat> the links, uh, you have here's a, a Vice article uh, from June of 2021, uh, which if you go to its links, you find that it uh, it doesn't actually say what they say it does. Uh, six, here we have the Reuters fact check, which we have already talked about, and um, PolitiFact. This is the PolitiFact. No sign that the COVID-19 vaccine spike protein is toxic or cytotoxic. So um, the so-called evidence that Wikipedia is providing that we are spreading misinformation is itself easily Debunked. Yeah, it appeals to authority purely. It's a it's purely appeals to authority, which is, by the way, in case you haven't been paying any attention at all, anti scientific. So this though th this actually this actually shocked me. You know, since since we've been here last on air, uh, our channels have been demonetized, which is a huge hit. Uh, that is is bad, but it didn't shock me. This actually shocked me, and from what I see on on Twitter, just in the conversation about it, some number of people are saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." This is Wikipedia has been going this way for a while. I didn't know. Wikipedia is one of those few places where, whenever an appeal to donate came up, and it had been more than a year since I had donated last, I always did. I always did because Wikipedia has been an extraordinarily important innovation that has allowed for information to reach people who otherwise would not have it. And apparently it's in the grip of ideology, just like everything else. Yeah, which is shocking. I, I will say um, a few years before my grandfather died, I remember specifically showing him Wikipedia mm. because the thing about Wikipedia as- So this would have been like 2010, 11, something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Wikipedia as a nonprofit what are the terms? It's nonprofit. I don't know that open source is the right descriptor um, for an informational technology rather than a you know algorithmic technology. But the basic point is this runs counter to the conventional wisdom of capitalism, really. Right, you've got Wikipedia runs counter yeah. in, in its in its sort of platonic ideal form. What it is, yeah. it, it is yeah. by far the greatest compendium of encyclopedic information ever compiled. I mean, it just so far outstrips the next nearest encyclopedia that there's no, there's simply no comparison. And it is, or at least has been excellent on so many different fronts. You know, professionals actually use it because sometimes, you know, you need to look up some term of art that is being used that isn't familiar to you, or you want to reassure okay. yourself that your understanding of it is actually correct. And you go and you find out that it either, either is or it isn't. So it's an in invaluable resource. And right? it's been, and it's been an important, good first step yep. for it, in embarking on even even research, you know, we we didn't shy away from telling students, yes, you can start there. You can't right. ever end there, um, and you can't ever end with the re the references that they cite. You have to, you know, you have to follow, 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 follow. But um, it it has seemed like the encyclopedia of you know that we always needed, that it, was impossible to have updated because it was people doing things that then had to go to printing presses and right. And, and such. it was that, and it got mm -hmm. better over time. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm. Just a guess. Will you look up on Wikipedia um, Dry Falls or the Scab Lands or something in that neighborhood? There we go. Um, you want to read a paragraph of that? Sure. Zach, could you Dry, put that up? Yeah. Dry Falls is a 3.5 mile long scalped precipice with four major alcoves in central Washington Scab Lands. This cataract complex is on the opposite side of the upper Grand Coulee from the Columbia River and at the head of the lower Grand Coulee, northern end of Lenore Canyon. According to the current geological model, catastrophic flooding channeled water at 65 miles per hour through the upper Grand Coulee and over this 400-foot rock face at the end of the last glaciation. 
It is estimated that the falls were five times the width of Niagara Falls, with 10 times the flow of all the current rivers in the world combined. All right. So now, this is a place we used to spend time with our students. Probably, you know, once, twice, sometimes three times a year, we'd go on field trips there Yep, for and a week at a time. It is embedded in a wonderful and paradoxical geological landscape that a geologist named J. Harlan Bretz first realized could not be explained by any of the normal processes that we use in geology. And he, living in an era in which geology had discovered gradualism and had uh, made such progress by rejecting catastrophic processes and realizing that things like the Grand Canyon were in fact formed very slowly over time by processes like erosion, geology had fallen too far in love with gradualism and it was incapable of recognizing something that had been produced all of a sudden, like, you know, in a space of weeks. Catastrophes were not uh, allowed to be discussed. We're not allowed to be discussed. Yeah. And so J. Harlan Bretz realized this and he published in, I think, 1922. Like um, there were holes in his model. He could see that there had been this incredible flood. He didn't know where the water had come from. A less courageous geologist named J.D. Pardee did know where the water came from, but didn't say anything. And so anyway, Bretz uh, fought over the course of the 20th century or much of it and was finally fully vindicated by his field in 1978 when he after his death no he was still alive he was okay I was he was still alive yeah. he was he got the i've forgotten what the name of the prize is but the highest prize in geology finally the field acknowledging that he had been right about uh the formation of the scablands and and dry falls being one of its most conspicuous features and when asked uh how he felt about finally being vindicated he said that everybody he felt like calling up to gloat to it was was already dead oh, that's that was bad. a bit of a disappointment <laughs> to him but anyway the point is you can go to wikipedia and you can be pretty yep. damn sure because there's not a lot of money in the conflict over um you know the scab lands or at, at this point but what if wikipedia had been around in 1940 right what is the misinformation what does dry fall does dry falls even have an entry or is it just like you know central washington and there's no mention at all it's like oh there's this there's this weird thing with some um rocks strewn around. Right. But, but if the idea is, well, what do most geologists say? Most geologists were wrong and Brett's was right. right. And, um, you know, and so anyway, the, the thing is the, the encyclopedia ought to look like something. It's not a final, you know, fine detailed source. Although mm -hmm. frankly, on a page like that, my guess is you've got a pretty good survey of all of the various different features of the scablands that look unusual and are hard to explain, like the, uh, giant erratics. Yeah, those erratic. rocks strewn around. Like yeah, you've got these giant, yeah. what are called glacial erratics, right? And these are big rocks that have been moved from where they were formed to some other place by glaciers. And then you have the paradox of the fact that glaciers never reached the scablands. So this is one of one of uh, Brett's pieces of evidence. Um, you're going to... You keep talking. Um, I'm going to find it. So anyway, the point would be... I don't know why Wikipedia is now a political battleground, or maybe I do know why, because how could it avoid that, right? Wikipedia probably does not have an immune system capable of fending off politicized pseudo information. Um, and so one has to, one has to separate somehow between the, um, the, subjects on which Wikipedia is likely to be a, a good survey of the current understanding from the subjects in which there is something at stake that would cause the uh, the narrative described there to be inaccurate. It's not the one I was looking for. Um, we've got we've got a number of pictures of uh, this is you and your signature hat uh, with actually this is going to be the program the 2015-16 program that we taught together that we then spent 11 weeks in uh, Ecuador um and the following so uh, you I, I in one of them you're standing on one of these erratics holding forth doing a little mini lecture out yes there. I think many years ago I posted that picture of me standing so we used to have students not look up Exactly. The, and in uh, fact, we have a piece that we wrote called Don't Look It Up. Don't Look It Up. Yep. So the idea was, yes, geology figured out what the scab lands were, but most people don't know the story. And so as you drive in, you can point to all of the evidence that Brett's used. And in one day, you can point your students at the process um, that you know, was at the center of this battle over much of the 20th century, and they can get the benefit of trying to puzzle through what this weird paradoxical evidence actually means. Anyway, it was a great, uh, it was a great exercise, one that I think we should be very um, proud of. But point being, um, at one point, 
Wikipedia was such a beautiful demonstration that things outside of the standard economic model where you would imagine that in order to create the greatest encyclopedia the world had ever seen, you would need immense amounts of money to beat Encyclopedia Britannica at their own game or whatever. And that's not how it worked. It could be done through this beautifully uh, um, surprising crowdsourced mechanism in which, yes, you could write anything that you felt like writing, but it improved over time as the you know, the differences were hashed out. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, without an immune system, something has politicized the content and has yeah. taken one of the great assets that we had, one of the surprising, beautiful demonstrations of what people can do, sometimes not for money, um, and has compromised it such that now um, it is declaring that it knows what the information is on the subject of COVID and that it therefore knows who is saying things that are not information. That's right. Um, that's a preposterous uh, claim in the first place. 